Welcome to the show. My name is Jeremy Poole, and I'm the host of The Moments on Real Estate Social, where we explore and celebrate the necessary transformational process one must go through to achieve a high level of success. Now, this particular interview is kind of a dream come true. It's a big one for us. I told you guys a couple of months ago that we're traveling to New York to interview Anthony Lowley, and here we are. We're in Barnes & Noble's in Manhattan, New York. It's beautiful. It's like 79 degrees outside. And we're here to, to interview Anthony Lawley. Anthony is an author, builder, entrepreneur. You've seen this guy probably on Fox News, NBC, CNN, probably everywhere. And we're here to learn uh, from this man. He became a licensed real estate agent when he was 19 years old and became a multimillionaire by the time he was 23 years old. In terms of the moment, I'm sure you had plenty. Anthony, oh please tell us, um, how do you go from being 19 years old and having the ambition to want to become a licensed agent and then becoming a millionaire by, by the time you're 23 years old? Um, it's all about dream board and goal setting. You know, I had a, a goal. At 19, I looked at the opportunity. I said, I closed my first uh, rental transaction, and it was like 2500 bucks. And I did it in 20 minutes. Okay. <laughs> and I'd let, I was like a vampire. I tasted blood. I said, <laughs> I want man, I, and I, I only had to go to school for one week, you know, to get licensed. Really? You know, in New okay. York at the time, sure. it was like one, you know, 40 hours worth of education. And then you take two tests. Uh, and I said, that's it? That's all I have to do? Right. So, and I, and I did the math. You know, you, you take a million dollars, you divide it by 365 days. And you said, that's pretty attainable if you just, you know, so it's step by step goal setting but right. uh it even bef came before i did that transaction is really when i was in the real estate class yeah. and the instructor was talking about how you could make money in real estate yeah. uh you could be a developer you can be an investor you can be a broker a salesperson you know uh and i said to the instructor i said excuse me sir if that's the case then why aren't you doing it and he said i'm going to talk to you after class yeah. i said no problem i'm waiting for you uh, so after class came and I said, so, you know, I, I don't mean to be a pain in the neck. I just, I'm just curious, you know, yeah. you, if you've done this so long. He says, you know, Anthony, I actually own this real estate school. Mm. And so I did the math. He was making about a million and a half dollars a year from, you know, licensing classes and all that yeah. stuff. So I said, sir, I'm going to pay attention. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. And so it was at that moment that uh, it made sense to me. I said, there's something here in the industry. There's something here. Mm -hmm. And I set my goals. I said, I'm going to. Uh, be a top-notch agent, you know, a top-performing agent, yeah. a salesperson, and sell real estate, rent real estate. But I said, you know, I'm not going to rub elbows with uh, all these investors and developers that I'm representing to sell their units and not pick their brain. There you go. You know, I said, uh, I said, I, I, it's all about access, right? Yeah. You know, uh, how lucky are you to have that kind of access? So, uh, having access to somebody that otherwise shouldn't even have anything to say to me. Yeah. But now I'm representing their piece of real estate, so Absolutely. they see value. There's a value add in them taking five minutes to talk to me. Uh, I picked everyone's brain. You wow. know, who's your uh, mortgage guy? Who's your attorney? Who's your title guy? How'd you get started? You know, hmm. I was kind of doing what you're doing, yeah, yeah. but just on a one-on-one -on -one sure. private level and just you know, building my network. You know, your network is your net, is your worth, net worth, right? Absolutely. So I took advantage of the industry, which is a real... It's all how you look at it, right? Yes. It's all how you look at it. Some people get a, a driver's license, and uh, they get a car, and the car is nothing but a money pit. It gives yeah. you tickets. It gets towed. It's always in the shop. Uh, some people get a driver's license and become an Uber driver, and they make money. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. a positive cash-flowing thing, and some people get a driver's license, like driving so much, they become a championship race car driver and make <laughs> millions of dollars, right? Like yourself. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's all, you know, same license, same opportunity. It's how you look at it and where you take it. Certainly. I love that. I love that. You know, I, I talk to a lot, of, a lot of agents, not just from the show. Um, you know, for instance, we just had the opportunity to, to sponsor a Keller Williams luxury marketing class continuing um, education at the Bellevue location, which is, I believe, one of the most prominent successful brokerages. And, and just having a lot of conversations with agents, most people don't do what, what you did in terms of rather than just looking at that individual transaction and 
putting in the work, doing your best to make sure that you're serving that client, but actually taking it a step further and picking their brain. Now, I wonder if that's something that you, that you could only do as a young man, or do you think that's something that can be implied in your late 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s? There's plenty of examples of successful people that started later on in life, right? Sure. Ray Kroc started at 50. There you go. Uh, was it Colonel Sanders? Much later, 60 something. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, and even Steve Jobs, who you know had to restart right. himself after he had that falling out with Apple. It doesn't hurt to have a couple million dollars in the bank, but sure. you know the uh, the idea is that the moment can happen now. Yes. You know? Yes. And you can change right now. It doesn't matter the past. You know? I love that. I mean, that's what this whole show is about, is not necessarily your past moments, but where are you going? And make those decisions right now today to change, to improve. That's fantastic. So, Anthony, here we are, Barnes & Noble, Manhattan, New York, um, here talking about your book. I understand you actually have a few book signings coming up. Yeah, we partnered with Barnes & Noble, uh, fantastic brand. It's actually, I talk about them in my book. Okay. Uh, it, early on in my career, I, there wasn't YouTube. There wasn't the Internet as fast <laughs> as it is. My Internet and YouTube was Barnes & Noble, so I got a lot of my education wow. uh, from learning, uh, just diving into those aisles and just learning and reading. So what's happening is that uh, we've partnered with Barnes & Noble and we're doing a national book signing. So for all the dates and times, because it's kind of growing every sure. week, we get new invitations, uh, they can check below this link and uh, we'll have all the dates and times. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I'm excited, man. It's 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 a really a dream come true. I bet. Yeah. I mean, hopefully years down the road, maybe I have an opportunity to write a book. I mean, that, that's, that's fantastic. We can I mean, co-author a book. Why <laughs> let's not? Do that. You know let's, I mean? Yeah, let's do it. Everything is the heart of the deal. Everything comes with a, with a root. Yeah, yeah, right. I love it. Well, you guys heard it. We're going to write a book together. Um, doing some research on you, it really seems like your employees are kind of like raving fans, man. You know, I, I was just telling my girlfriend here on the, on the way to this to this shoot is I think you're the only businessman that I know uh, who actually has fans. <laughs> <laughs> and so, how do you go about building that? I'd love to build that here. Um, what's your approach? I mean, so for you guys that are watching, I was literally walking outside to check on him to see if he got here. Here he is, uh, outside of his really beautiful Rolls Royce. Walk up to him as 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 nice as can be. I think for a lot of people, especially where I'm at in Seattle, Bellevue, some of the really successful people feel like they have to wear their net worth on their shoulders and on their, you know, uh, collars. You don't have that approach at all. You seem like you could have been uh, anyone, uh, you know, for you to, to embrace me in that way and to be that open and willing to help not only with me, but, and I've watched a lot of your videos, you're the same guy. You're the same guy I talked to on the phone. Oh, by the way, it's a cool story, guys. Let me come back to this. I first got introduced to Anthony by my girlfriend um, on, on Instagram. She was like, this guy has an incredible book, has an incredible story. One day, we need to interview him. And so I reached out to him, and I think it was something really simple like, hey, bro, I love what you're up to. I'd love to connect. And he said, when? And I said, right now. And the next thing you know, we're on the phone. And so for a guy like him to be as successful He's been on every network you can probably name. For him to be that open and willing to help people is, is, just, is just fantastic. And so beyond your willingness to help, I guess, is there, is there a secret to your success? Is there a secret to people's devotion and, 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 and loyalty to you? I think it's twofold. Uh, you get what you give. Okay. You get back uh, what you give to the people. You know, and uh, I never forgot where I came from. That's great. And I never forgot where my parents came from. Okay. You know, and it, I think it's a generational thing, you know, and I understand uh, humanity. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I just turned 40 this year, and I've lived a, a, a lot of life, not yeah. as much as others, but yeah. uh, I know that um, you only get good things, you know, karma. Karma. You only get good things. It makes no sense. Right. You know, people that try to showboat or pretend to be bigger than what they are, they're hiding something. You know, if you're confident in who you are yeah. as a person, um, you, you, there's no need for to wear a mask. You sure, know what I mean? that's, that's just it. That's just how I am. You that's know, great. it's uh, I'm, I'm more about the people. You know, I'm not disconnected. And that's that's definitely <sighs> evident, man. In your book, in, in your story, everything that, that I've seen about you, you're, you're, you are you. You're, you're a person, you're not wearing a mask. And I, 
that's something that I fully intend to carry on uh, from here. One thing from doing, doing research, it seems like your friends and your family are very important to you. Yeah. Um, can, you, can you talk to us a little bit about your family, where you came from? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Well, uh, uh, my mom was uh, from Ecuador, oh. so she came here uh, to escape a, a bad marriage. So she came here on her own and uh, with literally $20 in her pocket. Uh, so she had to give up, I think it was $10, to the guy to stamp her visa just so she can get into the country. So wow. she knew no one. Uh, she found her way to a Hispanic community uh, in Brooklyn and lived in an abandoned building. Uh, and throughout that Hispanic community, they introduced her to places she could work. One of those places was a sewing sweatshop. So she worked at a sewing sweatshop. Sure. Uh, she produced that money to kind of pay for her son, my half-brother, that was living in Ecuador. Uh, she took on multiple jobs. Eventually, she put herself through beauty school, became a beautician, then a home attendant. But she struck gold when she took care of an older woman who was an older Italian woman who said, uh, and she told her the story, I have a son, and this is before I was born, and then eventually I was born. And she said, I'm going to teach you how to raise successful boys because I have four boys, two wow. doctors, two, do two lawyers. And so she kind of mentored my mom on how to be a good mom and raise some good, good kids with some good solid footing and foundation. So that was a big help. You That's know. phenomenal. Uh, and then, of course, my dad, uh, he's from Italy. Um, he, you know, went to college on the GI Bill, so he was a World War II veteran, so he served in World War in the Navy. Uh, then eventually uh, that degree took him to uh, becoming a public school teacher. So he taught uh, all grades, all subjects, even music, science, math. Uh, and then eventually he taught prisoners in Rikers Island uh, to get their GED, their high school equivalency. Uh, um, uh, so uh, I saw him doing all of that stuff, you know, serving the public, serving yeah. the community, helping people. And even in the prisons uh, that he taught in, after class, he would teach them how to tie a tie and how to do a job interview. He would give them suits and things wow. like that. So, you know, I saw that, you know, yeah. growing up. I, yeah. We had a, a one-bedroom rent-controlled apartment, you know, very small place. And so I saw that, and I still remember those days. Do you? Yeah. So, wow. you know, and that's what kind of keeps me grounded. But uh, I appreciate those hard times. Yeah. You know, I, I you know, I, you. I remember, you know, not looking at someone like a, a, a kid, if I would go visit a kid, and they had cable TV, that was like a big luxury. Like, they were rich, you know? <laughs> yeah. and, so, and I still remember taking the bus and pulling the chain to get off on the next. So I remember all those things, you know? So, and, uh, and when I see people, a, a mother with their son or parents with their son, reminds me of me. So, yeah, those are the moments that uh, they still stay, carry in my heart. That's fantastic. That's great. Um, What's the most emotionally challenging experience that you've ever had? I think the emotionally challenging experience is going into uncharted territories and not having, not being familiar with how to navigate the, through those territories. Right. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's a transaction, a deal, adversity. Uh, you have to kind of get your emotions in check okay. and understand that and I've said this before, but life is like a video game, okay. right? The closer you get to winning the game, the more adversity, the more the zombies are going to come at you, the less lives you have to lose. <laughs> yeah. uh, but that's a telltale sign yeah. that you're going to get to a win, right? Interesting. I was, I was literally just having this conversation with someone, and they compared it to every time that you're about to level up, you have to face a boss. And you never want to face that boss. There's a good chance you're going to lose and have to go back a level. But that's when you know that you're doing something right. That's when you know that you're getting ready to to reach that next level. So that's fantastic. Yeah. It started yeah. to crack me up inside yeah. of us since yeah. you said that. Because uh, the, the other person I was talking to was also very successful. So it's interesting that he used that same analogy to mm -hmm. uh, explain that. Yep, yep. So if, 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 it's, if it's not muddy waters, if it's not uh, challenging, you're not really going anywhere. Turbulence. Yeah. Um, I think it was about 10, 15 years ago, I was on a business trip to San Diego with my friend's father, which at the time was a pretty successful guy in real estate. And as we were lifting off, he was like, Jeremy, do you feel that? I'm like, feel what? Do you feel that? It's shaking. You're kind of nervous. I can tell by sitting next to you that you're, you're nervous. In about five minutes, that's all going to calm down. 
Right. But what's happening was we were on one level. And this is very analogous to if you want to reach that next level, you have to embrace it, to put your seatbelt on and expect to be uncomfortable. Right. Because most people aren't willing to go on that ride. Better yet, they're not willing to be uncomfortable. They're not willing to put themselves in situations where they haven't been before. But, and there's a big but, you have to know that eventually it's going to level out. Right. And so I always remember that. Actually, just on the way here, I didn't say this to my girlfriend. I keep pointing over there because she's sitting over there. <laughs> but uh, that is so true, is, is as you're moving to the next level, you have to expect turbulence. You have to expect a big boss, something difficult. And it is risky. But I think like, like Alexander the Great said, fortune favors the bull. Right. You have to go for it. Yep. 100%. So tell me about your book. Tell me about <laughs> what got you. You have an incredible story. You're very open about your story. Um, what got you to write your book? Well, you know, anybody who's anybody that I look up to, right, the, yeah. the billionaires of the world, right. they all have a book. You know, that's like step one. Uh, <laughs> you know, so that was one part of it. But the other thing was in the world of social media, of uh, Facebook Live, right. Instagram Stories, uh, I wanted the book to be like a solid foundation. Like this is the story. Sure. And then this, let's build from here. Yeah. You know, so I wanted the book to be like a snapshot. And I, I look at it like, you know, the next five years, I want to write the next chapters of, love of the book. You know, yeah. so I wanted to be a, a good, solid reference point. Mm -hmm. um, and also I wanted to kind of share tips and techniques uh, besides the story that sure. I think could inspire people, uh, but I also added a lot of real estate. It's chock full of a lot of good real estate nuggets that people, whether you're experienced yeah. or you want to get into real estate on any level, whether yeah. you want to be a salesperson, whether you want to be an investor, a developer, yeah. I, it's like a good handbook starter kit. It is. You know? And I love how it's written. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's written very first person. Um, you can tell it's coming directly from you. When my girlfriend first first brought you up in conversation, I started doing some research on Facebook and Instagram and, and the website. Um, it wasn't until I actually read like the first 40 or 50 pages that I said, I, I, I have to know this guy. Because it, how you wrote it and how the, the book is positioned is as if you're in the room talking directly to the reader. And so that's cool. Yeah. That's a good yeah. book, man. It's yeah. a good book. Thank you. And yeah. it's a great name, too. Actually, <laughs> one of my first favorite business books was The Art of the Deal. And that's what got my got me really interested in, in real estate is, is just everything that's involved in structuring a deal. You know, thinking about it, making the phone calls, right. doing all the things that I feel like most people aren't willing to do. Right. So many people say that, say that they want success. They wear the nice suits. They want to drive the big car. But when you're alone and you know that you should do something, do you do it or right. do you not do it? Do right. you postpone it or do you act in the moment? Right. Um, and I think that's probably what got you to where you're at, yeah. is that you shorten that curve, you shorten that gap between thought and action. Yep. Um, and then the more you do that, you kind of go up in this upward spiral yep. where you gain more confidence, you gain more contacts, intelligence, yep. experience, all that good stuff. Yep. Yep. And that's the end of part one of a two-part interview. Stay tuned for part two.